He says he's the richest person on the planet. Um, I'd highly doubt that. If you were born 100 years ago and it was the 1920s, you'd be in some ditch in northern France, <laughs> living in the fucking mud, hoping not to get killed by a random sniper in some bullshit war you barely understand. <laughs> I love it. Meeting important people, getting the best car. They'll do all that in a game, but they won't do it in real life. Ooh, damn, that's what I'm talking about. Everyone knows what to do. You know what you have to do. Damn, by the way, this guy, listen, for as much hate as this guy that I've heard about him getting, he's he's dropping some gems right here, man. Go, you go, Andrew, Andrew Tate. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Cipolli here. Hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And in this episode, we have a reaction video with a couple influencers here on social media. Aiden Ross, who apparently is a gamer, a huge guy on Twitch. Apparently makes millions and millions of dollars as a young 20-year-old. This actually just blows my mind away. And this new guy on the scene, his name is Andrew Tate. He's been just taken over the internet, taken over by storm. Uh, I've seen a couple of his clips. I think uh, every time I log on to YouTube, a short clip of him is going every is everywhere. But my interest in this reaction video is really this generation of men coming up, uh, which intrigues me. And uh, I know enough about Andrew Tate. I don't really know his story. I know he's a kickboxer, four-time champion. Uh, apparently lives in Romania, but uh, he's got some values and principles that I agree with and I don't agree with. And uh, uh, Aiden Ross here was intrigued me because uh, young kid, video gamer, millionaire, blows my mind away, ain't here to hate, here to celebrate. I want to see how these guys come off and uh, what we can learn from these two guys. Let's check this out. But but the, the point is, is that... Okay, first of all, I don't know what's going on here. Both these guys have their shirts off. So I'm already feeling uncomfortable <laughs> okay once you get money that's fine but then you're gonna i believe money is an amplifier i don't believe i agree <laughs> by the way so i can't get over these guys with their <laughs> I don't know what, it is. what are you guys got the shirts off for um making me feel uncomfortable okay but back to andrew tate's point yes money is an amplifier i always say it's a magnifier it's always going to magnify character whatever's inside you if you're already a bigger giver you can be an awesome giver with money uh, if you're a greedy person, you're a taker, you're going to be even more of a greedy taking type of person with money. Money's just going to expose you to as well. So it's going to expose your money blueprint. It's going to expose your habits. It's going to expose your character. Yes, money is an amplifier. I believe money changes. I think it amplifies. So if you're a dork and you get incredibly wealthy, you become a mega dork. Whereas if you're a G and you get incredibly wealthy, yeah. you become a mega G. Yes, right. So ampli I'll give an example. amplifies your status. It doesn't change who you are. It amplifies who you are. If, if you see a Lamborghini pull up and a little nerd gets out, you think, oh, fucking super tech nerd, probably invented Stripe or something. He's a nerd. Whereas if you see a, a Lambo pull up and a big fucking strong, bald, whatever crazy dude gets out, you think, okay, he's a drug dealer. He's a mafia boss. The Lambo doesn't change what you think. It amplifies who the person is. Money is an amplifier. It doesn't change. So I'm very, I'm very fortunate. I'm very happy that I was poor for a long time because I never would have been able to learn the lessons I've learned. By the way, what a great contrast there because... Listen, I identify a lot with people that come from nowhere to somewhere, and I very rarely or have a hard time relating with people that may have inherited money or or didn't suffer to get the money. They had it easy, and that's something that I got to work on because I don't want to be judgmental. I don't, I don't want to be biased because in, in these days in, in business, I run across people who got money and, money, and say, hey, I want to have you as my client. I want to have you as my partner. So that's my evolution process of relating and adapting to people too as well that may not necessarily have the difficult and, and toughness and, and, and rough beginnings that I had with a horrible credit score coming out of a, a, a military with a divorce and single parent being a single father uh, raising my kids and, and having three jobs before I launched my business and having deal repossessions and bankruptcies. Like I respect people who've been through some trash, some crap, and then became something. It's, it's hard for me individually to relate to somebody who hasn't, but then again, hey, to each his own. If you're able to skip the pain process and uh, get to the success portion of your story, well, amen, hallelujah, more blessed than a lot of other people. So, hey, knock yourself out. If I was rich, I wouldn't have been able to take those risks. I would have never been able to be in those situations. I've been True. stabbed just like you. I'll show you my scar. So I would never have been able to put, put, been put through hell if been I had stabbed. money. So I'm very glad I was yep. poor for a very long time. And the reason I'm the richest person on the planet is not because of the amount of money I have. It's because of all the shit I had, that happened to me when I was poor. That's when I became... He says he's the richest person on the planet. Um, I would highly doubt that. But in his mind, he's the richest person on the planet because in his world, in his planet, yeah, He's overcome a lot than maybe his parents, his ancestors, the friends and family he grew up with. In his mind, 
Tate's mind that he is the richest person on the planet. And you should feel that way. For those of you that's out there and you grew up in a tough neighborhood, you grew up with uh, rough beginnings and you're able to have some success, you're able to make it to another level of financial status and, and elevation. Yeah, you are the richest person in your planet. May not be necessarily the planet because there are a whole lot more richer people than uh, uh, Andrew Tate here. But yes, I agree with him. In your mind, you should be the richest person and continue to grow as well. That's when I became top G. It's only when I became rich that people started to pay attention. So you are you time. are more wealthy wealthy than Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. No, Go, for, I wouldn't swap lives with them. Fucking fuck no. Like I respect Elon. I want him to buy Twitter. Don't know why he stopped. Should have carried on. Anyway, I love they're great guys. Whatever. I don't know them. Who cares? Point is, I wouldn't want to be them. Like I, everyone wants to be me. I'm top G for a reason. I've got it all. By the way, by the way. <laughs> I got I got to love the confidence. I love the confidence. No, I don't want to be like Andrew Tate. No, I don't want to be like uh, Aiden Ross. I got my journey. I got my path. And so, but I'm glad he thinks that way. And so uh, guys that uh, have been in this uh, type of uh, mindset, I've run across many times in my life. Um, guys like this, I've seen rise very quickly, but at the same time too, I've seen fall very quickly. I'd like to see where this guy, Andrew Tate, is going to end up a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. 10 years from now. I'd love to see how this guy ends up uh, with these values and principles that he's, he's continued to uh, roll through. And by the way, I haven't seen this video. We're watching this video all together. So I like to see how guys' values and principles last, not only through one year, but through time. Marriage, kids, ups, downs, Business success, business reversals. I'd like to see how people's values and principles stand the test of time. I've got every single gift that God can give, plus all the gifts you can make yourself. And I state that without arrogance. I don't mean to be arrogant, but I am a realist. And as a realist, it would be absolutely unprofessional. Now, this guy's very arrogant, and uh, listen, but there's no judgment behind it. You have to be arrogant. You got to. You got to feel like you are the top G. What's wrong with that? Whether or not you let other people know about it, that's a different story. Whether or not you have the exercise and beat your chest, Mr. and Mrs. King Kong about it, that's a different story. Professional for me to sit here and pretend I'm not an exceptional human being. He is I an am. exceptional human being. He is. And a lot of those things I did myself, and some of them were God-given. But the ones that weren't God-given was because I put myself through hell. I put myself through hell because I decided to throw comfort away. For 10 years of my life, I was never comfortable. Uh, that's right. I disagree. I think uh, it has been God-given. It's just that awareness of Tate discovering what that talent was that allowed him to develop that talent, that allowed him to develop that gift. Because I don't think that uh, there's things here that uh, is said are not good given. I'm reminded of a scripture in James. It reads like this. James verse 1 verse 17 tells us that every gift is from God. Now, we all have different gifts. We got different talents. We got different skill sets. But they're all important. Everybody's here got important. So if you don't feel like you're an Andrew Tate and your gift isn't the same, don't feel bad that you can never be somebody. He's somebody. He's obviously become wealthy, successful, and obviously known. But your gifts may not be as the same as his gifts. And so don't loathe or don't desired gifts that may not be your blessing. So you got to look for your blessing. You got to look through your gift. And that's only done through action. And what he mentioned earlier, which is through suffering, that uh, you go through the fire and the fire refines you. The fire uh, puts pressure on you, heats you up, finds out the impurities, purges those impurities out to, so, that, so therefore you can find who you are. So when, you, so when you're looking at your gifts, don't make the mistake of trying to compare your gifts to other and feel that you're indifferent because you don't have the same gifts as somebody that's more successful than you are that you don't. So don't feel indifferent. Like I remember, like I wanted to be a professional athlete. I wanted to, be, I grew up there in the eighties bulls and the eighties Chicago bears. I want to be either basketball or football, but my talent was elsewhere. My talent was into the military. My talent was being a United States Marine and my talent shifted into entrepreneurship. My talent became a father. My talent became a entrepreneur. My talent became serving and helping other people. It may not be an NFL athlete, but man, I sure make NFL athlete income today. So the outcome, the financial outcome, at least is the same. The recognition and the Super Bowl rings is differently. It's funny, I, I, I'm reminded of a story as I mentioned this right now. I remember uh, having a conference with Ray Kroc. We were speaking at the conference together and he shows me his ring. I said, bro, I would love to have that ring, Super Bowl champion ring. He goes, no, I like your ring. I said, why, why is this ring? Because that ring, because every time our guys make 100,000 a year or 250, 500, 750 million bucks, we give them another ring. And so he goes, no man, I'd rather have your ring. I said, why would you want my ring, a business ring? That's an NFL championship ring. He said, listen, this is the type of ring that you can win in your 20s. And only one time, very few people can win this. But your ring, man, that ring, I can win for the rest of my life. 
And today, Ray Crockett and I are in business together. We're traveling to a different financial level in our lives together and helping serve clients. But yes, there's different rings you can earn in your life. Just don't make the mistake of comparing yourself to other people. Wow. Never for a second. Isn't that, they say like the best, like when you're uncomfortable, it's like the best shit because you like, I don't know how to put in words, but you're, you're good with your fucking words. I don't know how to be comfortable, Yeah, my that's what I'm trying to say, yeah. You're, you're, you're sitting here on Twitch. I'm comfortable, I'm not gonna Fuck. lie to you. You're comfortable, right? I am. If you were born, if you were born a hundred years ago and it was the 1920s, you'd be in some ditch in Northern France, <laughs> living in the fucking mud, hoping not to get killed by a random sniper in some bullshit war you barely understand. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, because by the way, the uh, greatest generation are those that were born between, I think, 1902 and 1930s. It's considered the greatest generation because they fought World War One, They fought World War Two. I mean, if you're an 18-year-old American, you were in a war. You were drafted into war. You were storming the beaches of Normandy. You're fighting the, war, the wars in, in Bellowood. You're fighting wars. And by the way, take great reference here to what 18, 19, 20-year-olds have to do today versus 18, 19, 20-year-olds in the 1920s. Great reference. Stand for four years. <laughs> then you come home and hope your wife hasn't been bombed. Yo! You but, why, but, but that's the world. That's the world. The world has become ex exceptionally easy for a lot of men. It used to be a diff different place. Most men were cotton fodder. Most of us would have ended up in wars dying for fucking no reason. Damn. Now we don't have to do that. That's right. I disagree. There is a reason. You're fighting for your country. You're fighting for your home. You're fighting for your family. No matter how bad you think the United States of America is, my brothers and sisters, I know we feel very indifferent right now about what happened to Afghanistan. We feel very indifferent right now what's going on in the United States of America with this administration, but we still fought for home. We still fought for this land. We still fought for what we love and care about because it's better living here in America versus America being invaded. And yes, we fought for our country. There is a purpose and there is a reason if you want to serve this country as, in, as imperfect as the United States of America is in today, it's still, she's still worth fighting for. So because we don't have to do that, men think it's okay to just become comfortable now. You're not supposed to be comfortable. You were never evolved to be comfortable. You're supposed to be uncomfortable. Right. And if you find to make yourself uncomfortable constructively, it's very easy to be anything you want. You talk about GTA, Grand Theft Auto. I know the game. I used to play the old one on the PlayStation 1 when I was a child. Which one? I haven't played any. Which one? You talk about San Andreas? The very first one. Vice City, GTA 3? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many guys have played? Oh, no, the very, 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 very first one, like 1994. Okay, school. okay. How many of you guys have played GTA? I've never played GTA before. Call me old, call me whatever, but uh, disclosure, disclaimer, I've never played GTA. Don't play many video games today. And by the way, if I was going to play video games, it'd be uh, NFL, uh, Madden, and I stopped playing that about maybe maybe six years ago because I find myself very addicted. I have a very addictive behavior that I would literally not sleep for two days because I play in franchise mode and I want to build this team to become a top franchise in, in, in NFL. I built the team as a general manager. I'm drafting players and yeah. I stopped playing that because I wouldn't stop until I won. And every time you won the season, you start the next season. And I asked myself at the end of the day, unlike an Aiden Ross who makes money, who monetized actually playing video games, I wasn't monetizing playing video games. So I needed to stop. I needed to monetize my career, my skill, my gift that God has placed in my life, which is being an entrepreneur in the insurance industry. I need to focus in on that. And so I stopped playing video games. What about you? You play video games? Drop in the comment section below. And more importantly, do you make money playing video games? Drop that in the comment section below. But I don't, I've never played any of those games, but I find it amazing that people will sit there and spend all their time upgrading that character. Yeah. Making as much money as they can, Spending getting the best money. guns, getting strong, yep. getting some hoes, meeting important people, getting the best car. They'll do all that in a game, but they won't do it in real life. Ooh, damn, that's what I'm talking about. Why don't you do it in real life? Why don't you express those things? And by the way, outside, I'm not talking about doing the things that GTA teaches how to do, which is steal, kill, and, and, and all that madness. But why don't you shake hands more often? Why don't you get up and out and go to a networking event? Why don't you go out to invest yourself and go to a conference? Why don't you go and improve yourself and hold yourself accountable to a mentor? Why don't you do that? Why only through a video game? Why only increase the power of a character that doesn't exist in real life? Why do that? And this is the biggest thing that I'm weirded out about the meta about people playing in this fantasy world of things that aren't real, but they don't do it in real life. And and who knows? They're gonna probably monetize the fantasy world. The way it looks like this the virtual real estate, these virtual playland, these virtual whatever on the meta, which is I'm still wrapping my mind around that type of stuff. But uh, if you can't monetize it, if you can't 
put in your pocket, your bank account, you can bring it home with you and put it in your garage, you put it in your house. Why waste time doing it if it's not increasing your value to yourself and to other people? I, I find that incredible. Like, I, I, my life is GTA. I don't need to play a game for GTA. <laughs> if I want a gun, I'll fucking buy it. If I want a car, I'll fucking buy it. I want a bitch, I'll get her. It's me. I am GTA. Yeah, be the live example. I'm not saying advocating it to be GTA, but be the live example of the picture in your mind or the virtual world that you hope to be. Do that in real life. See how much more happier you'll be by putting yourself under that pressure, by putting yourself on that type of discipline to improve your skills every day, to work on your physical appearance, to work on your mental condition, to work on your entrepreneurial endeavor, to work on your financial habits. Work on that in real life, just not on a video game. Give that a shot. Amazing what would happen in your life if you stick with it for an extended period of time. I don't see why people play the games. They play the games because they're scared of loss. Because if you die in the game, you get another chance. If you lose in the game, you get another chance. In life, you get one shot. Okay. Damn, that's but if you get okay, I'm gonna I have to match these guys. I'm gonna have to <laughs> I'm gonna have to take out my shirt. Here we go. All right. I'm gonna do this reaction. We've got to do this reaction video. Uh, we gotta do this reaction video right. Okay, let's take a look at this. I get some balls. If you get some balls, I get a cigar. That's I what a, life is as a game. That's I what a, life I got, is as a, I got a man. Cigar too. This is one big video game. You get to upgrade your character. You're not born with any value. All these women that you just put me on with are born with value. They're pretty already. They're gorgeous already. They're good looking enough. Even if they're a five, someone's going to give a shit they exist because someone wants to fuck them. As a man, if you don't make yourself valuable, you have no value. You have to get up and do it. Just like a video game, you start with fucking zero. You have to decide if you want to complete it, you have to upgrade your character. So I find it amazing that men are going to play video games and fuck about and waste their time instead of upgrading their character. Everyone knows what to do. You know what you have to do. Damn, by the way, this guy, listen, for as much hate as this guy that I've heard about him get, get uh, trolled on, he's he's dropping some gems right here, man. Go, you go, Andrew, Andrew Tate. Right. If you had to become the most dangerous, intelligent, respectable man on the planet, you know you're supposed to go to the gym. You know you're supposed to train, learn how to fight. You know You know all these things. You don't do them. That's your that's your decision. It's your prerogative. I didn't I didn't make that choice. I made the choice to do it all. I decided all of that. That every single man watching this can do the exact same thing, which is why I have very little pity when I when I do these streams and people think I'm arrogant or I'm rude to people, or even to you earlier when I was making jokes and I've been joking with the girls You're saying good, drink bro. the soy latte. I'm, I'm not. Yeah. Of course, and I know we're only joking, right? But the point is, that's a conscious decision you made. I would never make fun of someone who hasn't got a choice. I wouldn't make fun of someone born with one. I have a choice, though. But if if you've made a fucking decision to be less than you should be, then I believe you should be mocked for that decision. I agree. I I feel like, yeah, because, like, you're not living up to your full potential. Like, it's your choice to basically not live up to your full potential. I, I love it. These guys are calling out the low standards. And, by the way, guess which is the best recruiter? The higher standard or the lower standard? The people that want to grind and work hard at their dreams and goals are the people that just want to complain, blame, and hide the shame. The complainers and the blamers, the people that feel entitled and people are operating their life as if they're, they're a victim. And by the way, they may have been a victim at one point for some tragedy that went on in their past, but there's something you can do, do about it. There's, if you've been a victim, you can become a victor. You can do something about it. You can heal, you can forgive, you can move on, you can move forward without waiting to have other people say, hey, somebody owes me this. Somebody uh, needs to pay me this. I deserve this. Yes, you do. but. Here's the reality. Life isn't going to give you what you deserve. Life is only going to give you what you fight for. Completely. And me as a man, when I put myself through hell, when I have had such exacting, such stringent standards for myself, why would I then have less exacting, stringent standards on the people I meet? Why would I put myself... Oh, I love it. By the way, backstage in our last annual convention a few years ago, not the last, it was 2019, okay? The late, great Kobe Bryant was backstage. He was our guest speaker. He's about to be introduced on stage. I'm about to bring him up. I asked Kobe in the background. I said, Kobe, who do you do business with? Who do you work with? Who do you rock with? Now that you're off the court, now that you are in business, who do you rock with? Let's take a look at the clip of what Kobe Bryant said backstage of who Kobe Bryant does business with. Let's check this out. Obsessives. He says you can what? Obsessives only. I cannot relate to people that are not obsessive about the game. As Andrew Tate is going over this, I'm reminded of a proverb written by the wisest and richest king who ever lived, King Solomon. Let's check this out. Proverbs 13, verse 20, reads like this. Keep company with the wise and you'll become wise. If you make friends with stupid people, you'll be ruined. And there's another Proverbs 18, verse 24, reads like this. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, 
but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Another one comes to mind. First Corinthians chapter 15 reads like this. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. So my point is, if you're looking to level up in life, if you're looking to improve your finances, improve your business, improve then your associations. You know, that means sometimes you got to say, listen, it doesn't mean you leaving your friends and family in the hood. It means you got to rise up to associate with other people so you can help the hood. You can help the overlooked and misled multicultural middle class. In order for you to improve your surroundings, you got to first improve yourself. And sure, you should improve, especially the level of people that you expect to hang around with. I want the people that hang around me that every time we go to dinner, I was fighting over the bill, not somebody mooching off each other. We just went to Paris and Monaco the last couple of weeks and it was about who is paying for who and hey man, let's go on this yacht trip. Let's go to the Eiffel Tower. It's who we can give and it was so refreshing to hang around with people like that because I know coming up, it's like, yo dog, who's got this? Who got this? Somebody's leaving when the bill comes out to go to the bathroom because they don't want to fork out the cash to pay and expect everybody else to pay. So annoying to be around friends like that. But if you're on friends that want to get to the next level of life, that's why people have value when they go to the martial arts gym, they go to the gym, you associate with the right people at the gym, martial arts, whatever it is that you are doing, because if you're hanging around people that want to compete, grow and improve, it's going to rub off on you and you're to hold each other accountable to doing so. Wolf through hell to be me and then meet someone who didn't put themselves through hell and then treat them like my equal. No, fuck you. I <laughs> suffered when you didn't. Yes. So you're not my equal because you decided not to suffer. You have enjoyed comfort when I haven't, and that's fine, but don't expect me to look at you as my equal, because you're not. I'll snap your fucking neck. Andrew, that's the world. Andrew, I have like a lot of friends around me. They're like good friends, look at me wrong. Like, they're real friends, but like, they're, they're incredibly like, like lazy, and, they're, and they have so much potential. Like they can be big, they can then, be then rich, Maybe you shouldn't be hanging around shit, them, man. Bro. But like, they choose not to. So, but it's really hard, because I love them. They're my friends, and I came up with these guys. Well, by the way, Aiden puts up a very good point. You love them but they're your friends. But if they're your friends, then they'd want to improve too as well. Now, some of you guys say, well, Matt, that means you're not a good friend. Well, what type of friend would you think I would be if I didn't ask my friends to level up their game over their lifetime? Because as I'm leveling up my game, then next thing you know, and they're not growing, guess what I'm doing then? I'm outgrowing them. I'm outgrowing them. And pretty soon, you outgrow them over a period of time. And he's only, what, in his young 20s. By the time he's 31, he's going to look back at them. He's married. He's got kids. He's excelling in his life. I don't know if that's his future, but let's say it is. He's going to look at his friends who are still lazy, not doing much, still mooching him for money. He's not going to look at them the same way over a period of time. I came up with these guys and they're so entertaining. I love them. They're my brothers, but like. I understand, but you have to, but there's something that's very always kind of confused me. We had a saying in the Marines that he who bleeds with me in battle shall forever be called my brother. So before you call yourself and your friends brothers, Ask yourself, now I'm not telling you to go bleed in battle. You could if you want to listen to the military and fight the next war. But if you want to go out there and champion something, you want to conquer something, you want to roll up the sleeves and get to work, ups, downs, good and the bad, you got to be able to suffer through something. You got to be able to fight and find out what not the best of you is, but find out who you are with your friends during the worst of your times. Because then that's where character is exposed. Then that's where you see whether or not that is a real friend or in this case, person that deserves the title of brother in your life. When I tell people that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, sure. everyone agrees. They go, yeah, that's probably true. The people, the it five people you spend the most time with, that's what you're going to end up like. It's OG, say, yeah, OG principle. And then they continue to hang around with people who they don't want to be. Yeah, well, hello. Why? Great you question. Have, there has to be a point. There has to be a point where you sit and go, okay, you're my friends, et cetera, et cetera. I love you guys. Yeah, we can talk, whatever. But I'm on a different life path. You have to leave some people behind. Yep. You wouldn't want to be, if you were to come hang out with me, <laughs> Stop. Uh, my wife, for some reason, is wondering why my shirt is off and I'm half naked here on camera. Sweetheart, it's uh, Andrew Tate and Andrew Ross, either Aiden Ross, their uh, reaction video to them. Just nobody who you think it is on the other side of the camera. I'm all good. Love you, babe. Mwah. <laughs> hey, and you're in a room with me and my five friends. You'd feel, you'd feel self-conscious. You're right. You don't feel self -conscious with your friends because you only so you don't you, you only you only surround yourself around people that are on like your level of like I'm with killers i'm with killers we're yes, fucking monsters absolutely if you were to come hang around with me and my crew you would be self-conscious and that yes. self-consciousness would motivate you or they would certainly instill the discipline required for you to change yes you don't feel self-conscious amongst your peers that's why you don't change 
That's right. If you were to get in a room and you're the only person who ain't a fucking monster, you'd want to become a monster. <laughs> That's life. That's humanity. So I say this to people all the time. If you know you're the sum of the five people you hang around wow. with, why are you hang around people you don't want to be? By the way, this just reminds me of what just happened in our business here in the last few days. We just got acquired by a very, 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 very large company. A company just bought out our company. And uh, let's just say they're the biggest privately held business in all of Texas. They're bigger than Under Armour. They're bigger than Nordstrom's. They're bigger than N any NBA, NFL. They're bigger than the Dallas Cowboys. They're bigger than the Lakers. They're bigger than the Yankees. Mass they're bigger than GoDaddy. They're bigger than Papa John's. Here's my point. The reason why we're able to acquire this with the guidance and mentorship of our CEO, founder, Patrick, but David, you might know him, host of Valuetainment. The reason why we're able to put our company in this position for us to be acquired and to develop a strategic partnership with this company called Integrity Marketing Group is because we changed our associations. Every time we walked into a room, everybody knew we were killers. Every time we walked into an industry conference, they knew we were killers. Every time people try to steal our guys is because they knew our guys were killers. They tried to get our guys for free age to go to a different company. Why? Because they knew, specifically from our organizations, our guys were killers. And so just to let you know and inform the world how much of a killer we believe, we were offered a big fat check for our stock at the company. And you know what we all did? Because we saved our money, we're disciplined with our finances, and we're betting in on ourselves about what's going to happen in the future. Guess what we did with the offering of the stock to buy us out? We said, you know what? Roll it into the next company. Roll it. We didn't want to take a check. We want to put everything, put our money where our mouth is back into this company because if the company is already this large, imagine now us getting to the next level. Imagine what that network check is because stock to us is the opportunity for us to be tomorrow's old money by the decisions we make today in 2022 because we are beasts. We are monsters. We are rocking the world. We are taking over our world. And we want to make sure that our children benefit from the decisions we make today. And if you're in that position, guys, and you don't have the right associations around you. You don't have the people having conversations with you about money and telling you the truth and telling you the right. And by the way, salute to Aiden Ross for bringing this guy, Andrew Tate, onto his Twitch stream. I think more people need to hear this message. It's not easy. It's not uh, something that you're gonna swallow uh, very well, but it's the truth of what America in the world needs to hear today. Values in principles and tell people what's right and tell them people what's wrong is sorely needed more in America today. And I hope more people follow these guys into what they're doing. I'm not so sure about uh, Aiden Ross because he's a Twitch guy. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure if I relate a lot with this guy, but this guy, Andrew Tate, I relate with a lot. I don't know his values and principles, so I'm not here to endorse anybody, but uh, I'll keep an eye out for these guys because they're definitely making some moves in their respective worlds, in the world of business, in the world of men growing up to put their, to put themselves up out there and to help show men and uh, their followers that follow them a better way of living. For that, I salute these guys. What about you? You agree? You don't agree? I would love to know what your comments and thoughts are in the comment section below. If you watch this video, haven't done so yet, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of other videos as well, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. It's probably the last episode I have a shirt off, but uh, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.